So in this first video on trigonometry, instruction to trig, we'll be going through what is trigonometry, when do we use it, and how do we use it. Now this video will show you the basics of introducing the concept of trigonometry and labelling the triangle and selecting the correct formula. Now how we use these two steps is then going on to our next two videos which we'll be looking at finding the sides and finding missing angles using trigonometry. So I'm sure many of you have heard of trigonometry before, regardless of what level you're working at. And so it's important to first go through when and how we use trigonometry and what it's all about. Now, hopefully, if you've looked at Pythagoras theorem before, which kind of helps, but not central to this particular topic, you'll have some form of appreciation that Pythagoras theorem only really works when you're trying to find missing sides of right angle triangles. Now, trigonometry, although at a much higher level goes beyond a right angle triangle, at key stage 3 at GCSE, it tends to focus more on right angle triangles. So, trigonometry is uh, how we use trigonometry is to find missing sides and missing angles of right angle triangles. So, how this differs with Pythagoras is that with trigonometry, an angle is involved, whereas with Pythagoras, it's all about the three sides of the right angle triangle. So, before we go forward on to working with uh, trigonometry, it's important that we're able to label a right angle triangle correctly with respect to this particular topic. So as you can see on the screen, we've got a right angle triangle and I've highlighted an angle uh, denoted in the purple shading. Now in a trigonometry question, you will always be given a angle. Now whether that angle is known to you or whether it's assigned with a letter or a size or a number, that's going to be absolutely fine. That's going to be given. And it's also, in this case, going to be acute because you're not going to have an obtuse angle in this level of trigonometry. It's always going to be an acute angle. So the first thing we'll do now, in some cases, there's always an order in which you can label a triangle using trigonometry. So if I just get a different color now, the first thing you want to label is the angle. Now, how we label the angle, I'm just going to go to a much, a little bit of a higher level of calling it theta. So with this, we're going to label this as theta. I don't know why it's gone like that, so let me just get rid of it. It looks a bit more like a stop sign. So the first thing we want to do is label the, label the angle we've given as theta. Now, if I just label that here, so theta is like a zero with a line through it, and we're going to call it theta. Now, that is the angle given. And what you want to do is you want to label this first. I'm just going to write number one. So whenever you get a trig question, label theta first. It's the angle that's always given and will always be something that's given to you in these questions. It's a very good place to start. Now, the next thing you then want to label is the side that's opposite the right angle symbol. Now, in Pythagoras, this was always side C. Well, in its proper name is, so if I just call this number two, is what we call the hypotenuse. So the side that is opposite the right angle, and again, the right angle will always be shown with a little square, is what we call the hypotenuse. And what we're going to abbreviate this as HYP. And so, and this is always the side opposite the right angle. In other words, the 90 degrees or the little box. So we start off again with the theta, then you find out what the hypotenuse. Now the third side we then need to label is this side here. So the third side is what we call the opposite, which we abbreviate as OPP. Now with regards to the opposite, that is always opposite theta. So it's always opposite the angle you've been given. And that's the third thing you then want to label. Now the last and final thing we then need to label, which is the bottom here, which you could say is the base of the triangle, but we don't want to be labeling things as height and base. We want to be labeling things in relation to where they are compared to the two angles that are mentioned. Now the fourth side is the adjacent which we abbreviate as ADJ. Now, the adjacent is always the last thing we mention. So just by process of elimination, the thing that's left is always going to be the adjacent. But if you're never too sure and you want to go rogue and label this whenever you want, it's the side that has both theta and 
the 90 degree angle. So the side that's got both the right angle and the theta or the angle that's been given is always going to be the adjacent. So just to summarize, the order in which we label a triangle is how I've numbered it on this particular diagram. So the first thing you want to label is the angle, which we're just going to call theta. This, the next thing you then want to sort of label is the hypotenuse, which is the side opposite the right angle, so opposite there. The next thing, the third thing we then need to label is the opposite, which is opposite the angle we've been given. And then the final thing we then need to label is the adjacent, which is the side that has got both the 90 degrees and theta. So moving on from that, now this isn't trigonometry, but it's really important that you're able to do this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you time to either pause the video and see if you can label the sides of these six triangles. So again, start off in the order in which it's labelled here. So start off with, on each triangle, labelling theta, then label the hypotenuse, then label the opposite, and then label the adjacent. So like I said, give you a chance to pause the video now and uh, well, then we'll go through the answers. So going through the answers with regards to this, so if let's just get a different colored pen. Uh, let's go for something that's gonna come up, let's go for pink. So first things first on this particular triangle, which I'm just gonna call number one. So the first thing we'll label is theta, which is always the purple angle. And then the next thing I then wanna label this side here is gonna be H. This side is gonna be the opposite, and this side here is gonna be A. Now with this question here, this is theta, this side is going to be h because it's opposite the right angle. This side is o because it's opposite theta. And therefore, this side is going to be a as it's got the side, both the theta and the right angle. For this one here, this is theta, this is h, this is o, this is a. For number four, this is obviously theta, that's h, that's o, that's a. Now, when triangles are kind of rotated, reflected, it's a little bit difficult, but again, if you follow through the steps as I showed you, it, you'll never go wrong. So this is obviously theta, this is h, this is gonna be o, and this is gonna be a. And on our final triangle, number six, this is theta, this is h, this is o, and this is a. So as you can see, it's just a case of following the sort of steps and working through this and like I said this is an important skill you need to be able to do this is not trigonometry this is not how easy it is if you've got it all right but without knowing this and how to label a triangle carefully and correctly it there's it's highly unlikely you'll get the next thing bit the next stage right so moving on to that next stage let's have a look is then we then come to the trig ratios now, the trig ratios is basically there is a relationship exists between the angle that you draw inside a right angle triangle and two of the lengths of that triangle. Now, the links of those are what we call the tangent, which we abbreviate with tan, the sine, which we represent as sine. Some people like to call it sin, but it's pronounced sine, and cosine, which again we abbreviate as sine. And these are the relationships that they have to two of the sines. So, now, these ratios are very, very important when it comes to uh, working out and using trig because as these are the basics of trig ratios now how we remember these formulas because these formulas are not given to you in any exam paper and it's something that you need to remember there are certain ways in which you can remember new, through mnemonics now the most common way of remembering the trig ratios is what we call soccer tower which is actually a name for my fancy football team and I used to say it, but I used to represent soccer spelt c-o-c-c-e-r uh, and then TOA, but again, we can use soccer TOA as it tells us what these ratios are. So as an example of what soccer TOA actually means is the SOA is basically sine equals the opposite over hypotenuse, as you can see from this rule here. COS is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is this rule here, and TOA is tan equals opposite over uh, the adjacent. So as you can see, the first letter is the name of the trig ratio, and the two following letters are what we have as our numerator and what we has have, have our has have our, what we have as our denominator. Now there are other random sentences that you can figure out. Now some are very very controversial. Some I would definitely not be repeating in a classroom, but 
any way that you that remembers how these what these trig ratios are the better it's going to be for me my teacher told me this rhyme of the old arab sat on his camel and hiccuped now as you can see the first letter of every word in that particular sentence refers to the trig ratio so the old arab is tan equals opposite over adjacent sign sat on his is sign equals opposite over hypotenuse and camel and hiccuped is cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse another slightly more controversial one is some old hippie came around here tripping on acid so again there are many many mnemonics you can write if you just google trig mnemonics i'm sure you can find them. i'm sure that with your imaginations you will come up with a more controversial uh, rule but any sort of sentence that allows you to remember these trig ratios is going to be to your benefit but i certainly would not recommend writing them on your test paper so moving on from those trig ratios and we'll be coming back to these trig ratios but it's just a case of identifying what the trig ratios are is we then move on to the steps in which we need. Now the first thing we need to do is if we look at now labeling the triangle. Now we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna label these triangles, but we're not gonna label the side that's blank. Now in these six examples, the theta's already been done, so that's a tick for us. Now, as I said, when you come to trig questions, usually theta will either be the unknown or the letter, or it will be a number, an acute angle. Now, in the question, you'll always be given two sides and only two sides. It's very, very unlikely you'll ever get all three sides in a trick question. You will only get two. Now, what you want to do is not label the blank side because if you, la if you label the blank side, it gets, then gets more confusing when we move on to the further steps or when we come to actually answering some of these questions. So, with regards to example one, now I'll work through example one with you and I'll leave you to have a go at the other six. So what we want to do is label the triangle. So first, theta is already labeled. Brilliant. So I'm just going to label that again. The next side, so I then label H. The side that's opposite theta is O. And this side here is A. Now, as I've said, we don't want to label any blank sides. So either you can scribble it out or you just don't label it. Now, ideally, you just don't label it. But if you need to scribble it out, then like I said, go for it. So if you want to have a go at the next for the five questions of doing exactly what we've done here again remember to don't label any blank sides so in this case don't label this side don't label that side don't label this side don't label this side don't label this side but label everything else have a go at these five examples and what I'll do is then if you pause the video and then I'll pause it I'll go through the answer of what you should have Right, so let's have a look how you did on those questions. So again, we're labeling theta as theta. This side is my opposite and this side is my A. Then here we've got our theta. This side is my H, this side is my A. In question four, I've been given that this is my A, this is H. In question five, this is H, this is O. And in question six, this is my A, and this is my O. Now, the next thing we then need to do is match these up with the equations. So now, if I just quickly write down the rules, uh, so opposite over adjacent, sine theta is O over H, and cos theta is A over H. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the letters that I've written on the and how I've labeled these triangles, and I'm going to match it up with one of these three formulas. I'm going to label it up with one of these three. So, looking at question one, I've been given the opposite, uh, sorry, the hypotenuse and the opposite. So, I need to find out which trig ratio uses O and H. And lo and behold, it's going to be sine. So, this question here is going to be a sign question. If I look at question two, I've got O and A, so I'm looking at which of these trig ratio uses O and A. Well, that's going to be tan. If I look at question three, which trig ratio uses A and H? So I look through my list, which ratio uses A and H? Well, that's going to be cos. Question four, which trig ratio uses A and H? And again, that's also, again, going to be cos. And with question five, again, I'm looking at which trig ratio uses O and H. That's going to be sine. And then for question six, 
which trig ratio uses O and A, and that's going to be 10. And that's the second step of what we work through. And this is how it's slowly starting to build in how we use trig ratios. Now, what we've just done is we've done the first step and the second step to solving trig equations. So I'm trying to find missing sides and missing angles. Now, what we're now going to do in my next video, I'm going to show you how we use these two steps to work out missing sides. In the third video, I'm going to show you how to find missing angles. Now, in each of those videos, you just need to follow four simple steps. Now the four simple steps are, we've done two of them in this video, so the first one you're able to do is label the triangle, leaving blank things blank, and that's the most important thing. So don't label any angles that you've not been given, don't label any sides that you don't know any information of, and with step one, one of them will be unknown. So one of them will either be a theta, or one of them will be an x, or any other letter that we're trying to find the value of. Step two is then pick the correct ratio and write down the formula. So for this, if I just go back to the previous set of work, so us identifying the correct ratio is what I've circled in red, and then writing down the formula would therefore be writing down either, for tan, I'd write down this formula, for sine, I would write down this formula, and for cos, I would write down this formula. And from those two steps, we then move on to the next, to step three, which would therefore be substitute the values into the formula and step four, solve for x, don't forget rounding and units. Now, in my next two videos of working out the missing side and working out the angle in my third video, we will focus on the step three and four a little bit clearer. But hopefully, the most important thing is you being able to label the triangle and choosing the correct ratio based on the information that's given to you. Now there is an accompanying worksheet for this video, so if you would like a copy of that, drop me an email at 162maths at gmail.com and hope you, uh, this makes sense and you move on to the next video.